Good evening. I'm going to call the Board of Selectmen meeting for March 12, 2018 to order. As required by open meeting law, we are informing you that we will be video, audio taping, as well as live broadcasting this public meeting. In addition, anyone in the audience, video or audio taping, must notify the chair now. Hearing no one, please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Anyone for weekly briefing? Carolyn Carey, Community Center Director, but I have nothing to say except I would like to introduce you to Nolan Strezpeck, who's going to tell you about our upcoming event. Awesome. Yay. Welcome. Hi, Nolan. Hi, Nolan. Hi. Thanks, Thanks for, coming. for coming. Yeah. So as part of Art Week at the Harwich Cultural Center, we're going to invite the students to make a diorama of their favorite place in Harwich. I love Harwich diorama. And during April vacation on Tuesday, April 17th from 10 to 1, children can come and do open studio time like the artist with adult supervision. Uh, we'll have some materials that they can have to make their diorama or they certainly can bring their own. So Nolan has been very helpful in making his sample diorama. Uh, we'll have a couple in town so kids get excited about doing it. Great job. You want to tell them which one you did? I did Long Pond. Long Pond. That's awesome. What, yeah. What's in it? What's inside? Can you uh, tell us a little bit about what you put in it? Um, we, knitted, we knitted the sand, sand and we put cardboard under the towel so it stay, stayed like that. And then we put umbrellas on it. Wow. Great fun. job. So cool. Nolan, Love could it. you help me with life science project? <laughs> <laughs> Good with the glue gun. <laughs> mm -hmm. That looks like it was fun. Yeah. So we'll send um, flyers out to the school. Uh, I think it's going to go out on the 6th of April, um, about two weeks ahead of vacation. They'll go out to the schools, and then we'll always have more at the center, and they can put their name on top. And on Saturday at our open house for Art Week, April 28th, we'll have a presentation of works, and everybody is welcome to come. We'll have that uh, project, and we have a really big load of other events that will happen for Art Week. So, more to come on that. Excellent. Awesome. Great. And Thank the only you. thing we forgot to, to mention is that we'd like the selectmen to submit their favorite yes. place yes. in her. There's an adult category. Yes. You want us to do one of the dioramas? If I'm doing a diorama, category? he's No, no, we'd like you to do one of the dioramas. Yeah. People I'm included. with God. I'm not doing this. Nolan help. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to bid. <laughs> Nolan will be available for help on that day. <laughs> we're going to bid on Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for weekly briefings? Mr. Chairman, just for uh, public comment, when you're ready. Real quick, I just got the official word, no Monomoy School tomorrow. We would assume that, but it's official. And if you folks at home, if you don't have to go out, please stay home. Let the DPW and uh, your public safety do their jobs. Thank you. Thank you, Nolan. Yeah, I was actually just going to reiterate <coughs> that. We did close town hall. Actually, there was a, a list of uh, managers. I think just about every single town hall is closed on the Cape tomorrow. Uh, the forecast I just watched a little bit earlier, we're up to 10 to 15 but blizzard conditions from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. And I can't stress enough, like Norm said, you know, let our people do their job, you know, let us clear the roads and let's try to make sure that we're able to open and be operational for a Wednesday. So just if people would be safe out there, we appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Not yet. Still in the weekly briefing. Weekly briefing. Okay, now public comment announcement. <laughs> Sharon Flieger, Wastewater Support Committee. I just wanted to let the people out there know that as of right now, we have a meeting planned for this Thursday, March 15th at 6 p.m. And uh, Megan Eldridge is going to be there and give us an update of where we are, so to speak, with what's coming with the, from the Board of Health as far as wastewater goes. 
I do want to caution to please check the website in the event we do have to cancel, not knowing how bad the storm's going to be and whether it'll carry over into Thursday. But for right now, we still, we're still on go for that. Great. Where is the meeting? Here, in the Griffin Room. Great. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Cindy Williams from the Harwich Chamber of Commerce. I just wanted to remind everyone we have our job fair on Thursday at Monomoy High School. This is for all ages. I can't stress that because uh, there was some confusion last year. All ages. So if you're looking for a job, please come. We have about 24 businesses from Harwich and Chatham. We've partnered again this year with the Chatham uh, Chamber of Commerce. And um, full-time, part-time, seasonal, year-round. Um, so there are plenty of jobs out there. So please come join us, 2.30 to 6 at Monomoy High School. And what day again? Thursday. Thank you. Anyone else? Ed McManus uh, with the Harwich Cranberry Festival. I just want to uh, give a sort of follow-up from a previous uh, briefing, an uh, update on uh, the... Uh, Recent a concert we had on Saturday night. It was a spectacularly wonderful event. A couple of you were in attendance, and I thank you for that. Um, the folks had a had a wonderful time socializing before the the concert and enjoyed the concert. It was a sellout crowd, um, and uh, from the uh, uh, revenues that we'll realize off of it, it'll allow a, a cranberry festival to. Uh, pay for an additional two or three scholarships or the equivalent in other services that we help out with uh, youth in our community. So I just want to thank you all. Great. Thank you. And especially I want to thank uh, Carolyn, Erica, and Bob, the folks that uh, um, made us our transition in and set up and all the things just seamless. It's works working very well. Great. Looked like a full parking lot. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else for public comment and announcement? Let me get the consent agenda. Mr. Chair, I move the following consent agenda items. A, approve the minutes February 26, 2018. B, approve the recommendation of the Board of Assessors to award the contract for the reevaluation update for fiscal year 2014-2015 to Paul S. Capinos and Associates. C, Vote to sign an agreement between Barnesville County and the Town of Harwich for dredging at Sacatucket Harbor and Allen Harbor. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Larry. New business. Request from the Community Center Director to construct a seven circuit, say the word. Labyrinth. Labyrinth. <laughs> at the Harwich Cultural Center. Thank you for the opportunity. And before I start, I, I also wanted to thank the people who were so kind on Facebook, but I cannot take the credit. I, I wish I could take all the credit, uh, but no way am I even close to being that good. Erica has jumped in. Um, one of our renters has been part of this. It's really a team process, and we're working to do exactly what the board had asked, work with the chamber, getting more people here to the community to help with the economic development of our town, grow the cultural center, and this is just one way that we're looking at doing it. It's a minimal cost. Uh, we are going to ask for donations from some of the uh, construction companies here in Harwich. Um, we're also reaching out to some of the faith-based places, um, as they did in Chatham. There is currently one in Chatham. This is a real um, destination for people. They look online to see where they can go. Um, so I think it will bring in a new spirit and body into the cultural center that we're maybe not tapping into yet. It's also a great thing because it would be free, and um, I think it would be something that all ages can do, including children and families, and that's an important thing for us to offer on the Cape. Um, sometimes if you have a family trying to do a lot of things can be very expensive. So we want to introduce some culture to them in a different way way than we have before so thank you that's it I think. that's it great starting comments with uh, Don no, no comments 
to know? I have a few comments about this that um, I think are just important to bring about. Um, my first comment is you said uh, some faith-based people. So I have a real problem with the separation of church and state, and we don't do it really in Harwich. In my first year on the board, I questioned why we had a Christian um, minister saying prayers at the, the uh, ceremony for inducting our police chief and whatnot because I wasn't sure what if he wasn't Christian or I just, I feel like separation of church and state is something we should uphold. And a labyrinth is something that is, can be looked at as a religious belief, a spiritual belief. So that kind of like doesn't sit well with me. Um, but also my thought is if that isn't a, you know, an idea that everybody shares, I think it's too early to be asking to do anything permanent there because we're still in our two year, what are we gonna do with this building phase? Just what I think. Thank you. Can I just answer? Sure. It's not permanent. I did go to planning and building. They're not permanent structures. You would change, they are pavers or we have a different um, pictures if you'd like to see them that you can do, but it is not considered a permanent. It's more of a, um, I wish I had the right terms. I should have grabbed Charlene to tell me what it's actually called, but it's not part of a permanent structure in any way. And we're open to what you're saying. Okay. Thank you, Charlene. Julie? Actually, I'm glad to hear that because that was my only concern was if anything changes, you know, to hate to see somebody go to a lot of work to create something this beautiful and then have to dismantle it. So, I mean, if it's something that can be moved or if it had to be, it wouldn't be as much of an issue for me then. Uh, thank you, Karen. My question is uh, just looking at the diagram where you have uh, uh, the market area and the vendors. Uh, how do you see that? Is that part of the farmer's market or that it compete or uh, uh, how does that fit into the whole? We would strategy? never want to compete. What we wanted to do was show you that we're not going to take up the whole footprint so that other things could still happen. We have rented that in the past um, to Bowie's and Burlap who did a marketplace out there. So we were just showing you that things will still fit out there and we can still rent and those kind of things. So uh, we're in no way trying to compete with the other um, farmer's market. But if they'd like to come over, we're always happy to have them. We can uh, work something out. Thank you. I'd like a little time to go look at some. Um, if you're looking for a vote tonight, I don't think I would vote on it tonight. I'd like to go visit a couple other ones and see what it is. My concern was the same as Janelle's, the second half of Janelle's, is if we're going to extend this um, cultural center into a few more years, which it's really starting to look like we're going to make a long-term commitment to this, um, then I'd be more apt to support it. But I like the concept. Um, so thank you. Uh, if, the board, if the board wants to take a vote on it tonight. I'd rather wait. I'd like right. to go visit and look at some and get an idea from you standing out front what it's gonna look like and where. So sure. I'll make that appointment. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Erica. <coughs> Old business, uh, final approval of the annual town meeting warrant. So uh, last week we voted the content of the warrant. Chris had to, I think he did be change some language, Chris, or just in the ballot question? Yeah, actually, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, one of the things as a result of uh, Saturday's session, uh, two, two changes, I think a minimum two changes, had to be made to the, to the warrant. Uh, one of them was um, the, the board had looked at and, and had uh, agreed to increase the um, ability uh, based upon the uh, Finance Committee's recommendation some of the elected position salaries. So if you look on page nine, what I did was to, to kind of make it a little, hopefully clear, uh, kind of have the current system, what those amounts would be, and then the Finance Committee proposal. So that way town meeting can see uh, before and after. Uh, so that was one of the things. And we did uh, appropriate, or uh, she didn't put the estimated cost in there. So we had the estimated cost in there of the uh, 117,000. Uh, Article three is actually kind of interesting because it just sets the rate. So then you have to put that into Article Four, which is the budget, the actual money. So the only thing that changed on Article Four on the money was just the, the grand total what was uh, was changed. The other uh, and element. What is it now, Chris? What did you change it to? 
it's about 20,000 more than it was before, Larry, the uh, Article 4. Yeah. Because I think the town one articles we have is what you handed out at the town meeting right, or Saturday. So it's not up to date. There's one on under yeah, the one that you, today, the one on today's version. What is that? Because that, so that, that came out of Saturday's session. Page no, nine of the under the under your work. Okay. Well, this is Dow's, oh, this is Dow's questions too. Um, Do you see it under that's there? That's what I thought. No. I think you had. Did no, you? this is mine from Saturday. That's why I have two. Well, maybe just for illustration. There it is. Probably have it. Just, it has it? the list. Okay. Page nine. It, it just has a listing of currently what would what would trickle down to what we normally do, and then the finance committee proposal, which is different, which is a, a higher amount. So we just put that in. The other thing on the town clerk was uh, <coughs> to slot that position, so we do have the the range. Uh, we will have that on for the next meeting for the board to talk about those salary adjustments. So this just basically gives us the ability to to talk about it at town meeting. Uh, and as I indicated, Article 4, just the estimated cost change. And then Montemoy Regional High School on, uh, I'm sorry, Montemoy Regional School District budget, Article 5, uh, because now we're doing a capital exclusion vote, that had to have a provision that allowed for that to, to occur. So that language was uh, incorporated. The good news is I have provided uh, John Giorgio, he's actually traveling today, but he has looked at the um, Article 5 language and he has looked at the ballot questions and he said they were good. So we, we have had uh, legal counsel approval, so not just my drafting, but, but his uh, review and approval as well. I think those were the primary changes. Uh, obviously the warrant does include the ballot questions, but I know you have that as a separate item, so we can do that next. Yep. Okay. Anyone with any questions on that? So we need a motion <coughs> to approve uh, the warrant. Mr. Chair, I uh, I move we uh, approve the, uh, excuse me, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I move we approve the final, uh, or we approve the uh, annual town meeting warrant articles as uh, presented tonight. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the final town meeting annual town meeting warrant any discussion Don yeah I'm not <laughs> I'm just going to zero in on the uh, the wastewater I'm real disappointed I mean it's all part of the same motion <coughs> but I'm not willing to vote for anything moving forward right now based on where we are with our wastewater and what the community knows the same five to ten outstanding questions are still here with no answers as my wife pointed out a couple of days ago, she's on the Board of Health. It was news to her that she's been working on this uh, because they weren't. Yeah. Um, we're, uh, we're just a comment. We're voting the warrant. We're not voting whether we support each individual okay. article yet. Okay. So this yeah. is the warrant that's going to town meeting. You're not saying you're supporting when the it, article. When it gets to that article. Right. So you're not voting on the article. Uh, um, Only the warrant. Okay. Okay. Uh, Any other discussion? No, that was going to be mine. We, we have come back and vote to uh, accept and adopt the individual uh, articles in so the warrant. Support. That would be the next. The next step after this. Yeah, correct. Uh, I think I and, I and Sharon uh, and her committee are working really hard. We all have the same, uh, basically the same point of view. We have a lot of work. The committee is working really hard to answer a lot of questions before town meeting, before we take this vote. And I'm certainly not so, saying the committee's got any uh, complicity in this because they are working hard. We don't have answers. Uh, let me restate that. We're, we're uh, expecting uh, much more detailed information from our consultants by the end of this month. That's the deadline they gave us. We should answer significant most of the questions that are still outstanding. And, w and we take that along with the action the Board of Health is taking and how they're handling. They haven't taken any action. Uh, that, well, they started discussions, I think. Uh, There's no vote in position. No vote in position, but they started looking at what was required, I think, a couple weeks ago. Me, let's get, still let's get into But that's okay. Let's get into debate on the wastewater. And we'll yeah, the another time. <laughs> so any other discussions on approving the final uh, annual town meeting warrant? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Unanimous. Unanimous? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move we approve the final uh, ballot question as uh, presented tonight. 
We, we can have a discussion after. So. Yeah, no, I, I was going to say, Mr. Chairman, do you want me to just let people know just what you're looking at? Because it was Saturday that it was decided, yeah. so I don't know if people watch Saturday's budget session. Yeah. Can I get a second on the motion since second. it's been made? Okay. okay. Discussion. Go ahead, Chris. So just uh, in, in <coughs> terms of it, the uh, ballot questions uh, per the board's uh, discussion and vote on um, Saturday, uh, we have the same four traditional ones on the uh, debt exclusion. So the first one is for the wastewater management plan, phase two. Uh, the second one is for the road maintenance program that we have traditionally done. These amounts are all in the uh, capital plan and, and have not uh, been changed. The third one is for the uh, construction of the station two, the fire station two, uh, including the equipment and furnishing of same. And then item four is the um, installation of the pet, pet cemetery crematory. Uh, and that would be at 276 Queen Anne Road. Uh, just a reminder to folks that would be funded by uh, receipts of that operation and not necessarily by the taxpayer. I say not necessarily because we have to do it as a general obligation bond, but it can be paid for by fees. And then the two that we added as a result of uh, the budget session on Saturday, uh, number five uh, in this one is shall Town of Harwich be allowed to assess an additional $76,078 in real and personal property taxes for the purpose of partially funding the Monterey Regional School Harwich assessment portion for installation of bathroom facilities at the stadium field. We did get the actual number for our portion of that, uh, so we have that. And then uh, also on number six, uh, shall the town of Harwich be allowed to assess an additional 36625 in real property, uh, real and personal property uh, to fund a stabilization account for the Monterey Regional School District. Uh, that was 50000 so our portion of that is 36000 And as I, as my understanding of the board's intent was to have the voters be able to weigh in on this, so this would allow for maximum exposure for the, the voters to be able to weigh in. And then number seven is the uh, the charter amendments that the were notes. Uh, the, the cliff notes version yeah, of all the uh, four or five pages of charter changes that we had at last year's town meeting. Okay. So those are the seven the seven uh, articles up for the uh, ballot consideration. Obviously, the elected positions are already done separately. Only the vacant positions on the various boards. Thank you, Chris. Any discussion on this from the board, Janelle? So, Chris, on the uh, pet crematory, is there any way to put uh, like a, a little subtitle or a sub sub note that the uh, it would be paid for by fees collected because the way it reads I'm not sure that the general public maybe they didn't come to town meeting maybe they just not haven't followed it it's, it it seems like it's you know yeah the sh the short answer is no uh, because the the state law has in there specific language that we have to put in mm -hmm. what we will do and we did this on Sacrapucket Harbor and I think we have it in the explanation on the um, warrant. on the warrant yep. that this would be funded by fees so we can do it in the explanation mm -hmm. uh, we just can't include it in the actual language of the uh, of, of the article ballot. of the ballot okay. all set you know yes thank you Don thank you Mr Chair. Um, and further to that, uh, you can't anticipate what you haven't collected. So the state requires this be listed as a general obligation bond with the underlying uh, full faith and credit of the town. Correct. All set, Don? Yep. Larry? Along that uh, general line, in terms of, uh, of our operating budget and what we pay on debt, Chris? Yes. You know, you have this nice, uh, in your budget, this nice... Uh, bar diagram of what we're paying because you hear like wastewater for instance 22 million that's not being paid all at once it's being paid over a number of years that's correct i wonder if there's, if there's a way to put this as an explanation in the in the warrant but not this whole uh combine some of these graphs pick out some of the major items like wastewater the fire station and show what that's how that's spread out over the years so it makes some more sense than just looking at the, the one number which in fact is going to be paid out over a number of years yeah, actually, I, I think as we a further could. explanation, there's too many categories here. You can't read it. Right. And this was reduced to about, you know, three, maybe two or three of the major categories. You know, the big expense items, and then all others. So you can. Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. We should be able to do that. Um, we have the in the warrant itself. We we have attached kind of the uh, 
the material that I have for you know what the Warren articles are and, right. and how it gets funded. So we can include that in that section. Uh, I think it's appendix six. And simplify this. Yep. Show, you know, yep. show a few of the major categories. So it's understandable. Car Carol's in the audience, so she, she helped to uh, design that so we can simplify it in terms yeah. of yeah. what's it's already been approved Carol. and then what's being sought. Yeah. We could be way in more gray, though. We can keep well, this is, black there's too many white. categories here to read. I'm thinking to take you know, a few of the, say, three of the major categories and show those yeah. and then lump the others together so you can read it. We uh, don't it print it in a, color, so we'll, we'll have to do black and white, so we'll do, you know, Well, you can do colors. You do, yeah, you yep. can figure it out. Should we? Okay. Uh, yep, you're all set. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, Chris? Thank you. Annual town meeting warrant articles. Um, I believe we're still going to have a meeting with finance committee to discuss warrant articles. Um, so we don't have to vote individually tonight unless the board so chooses to vote individually tonight on some of these. Um, if we if we would rather, we can bring this back next week and you can all go through the warrant, pick out the ones you may have a problem with, <coughs> yeah. and then we can discuss those and vote those ones separately and then vote the rest as a group of numbers, yeah. if that makes sense. Sure. Okay, and just um, to comment on Don's comment on the wastewater, um, this is a monumental, huge project that we're undertaking, and I think that between our consultant, the wastewater support committee, the board of selectmen, we're trying very hard to get the answers to these questions. Chris, can you just a, a brief um, explanation of what this is going to cost us if we don't go to, t or what this could cost us if we don't go to town meeting with us with this this year? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think in terms of uh, timetable, uh, we have kind of geared up. Obviously, we're trying to com we're trying to match up with uh, Chatham because we obviously have to plug into their system, and there is a certain time sequence for the uh, loans that we would be in competition for. We certainly want to be into that SRF funding because that gives us the availability of two percent. So, for instance, going out on our own or doing something separate. That puts us into the marketplace of instead of 2% would be 3%. So you take a, uh, a borrowing of in the 3 to 3.5% three range versus 2%, almost double the, uh, the amount of interest cost. And when you're talking about borrowing $22 million over a uh, large period of time, 30 years, I think each of these borrowings is, is slated for, uh, the interest would be considerable. 3.7 so to 5.2 million, I think, is what Peter Hughes I think that's what he had. I, I did not get a chance to rerun those, but it, it's obviously significant dollars. And, and more importantly, the, the other piece to this is, you know, you get the town of Orleans is starting to put sewers in. We're going to start having a lot more competition for these dollars. So the more we can stay a little ahead of the curve, if you would, I, I think we're going to have more accessibility to that 2%. And because we're doing this one as a regional, uh, by submitting it and keeping to the timetable, uh, we have the opportunity of having potentially some of that be zero because it's a, uh, a regional and it's a, a nitrogen reduction project. And so then it is important to, to try to move this year. And I get it that there's, there's a, this is a big project things. and we are certainly working our way through uh, individual questions and, and certainly we will work to answer those prior to town meeting. Just Chris, one more thing. Can you, can you give us a rough number of what will be thrown away if this does not pass town meeting or potentially could be thrown away? Well, I, I think there's two two major concerns uh, in terms of that. Number one, the, the Chatham IMA uh, calls for us at each of the, the uh, deadlines, we have to owe them money. So we will be paying money and you know the agreement would have to really be looked at if we're unable to move forward. I think the material that we have on the website, just the, the larger picture, uh, if we don't, we put ourselves at risk of having the Conservation Law Foundation uh, activate their suit, uh, come in, and just as a for instance, Boston Harbor, uh, and this is the same group that had Boston Harbor cleaned up, they had a mandate to finish it in 10 years. So to, to borrow, in our case, $240 million over 10 years, you know, the numbers that you see on those charts would be dramatically different because we're able to stretch it out over 40 years versus over a 10 year time horizon. So the, the tax impact would be significant. The homeowners as well, just in, in terms of that, if an individual homeowner has to comply, which the state is talking about doing, DEP in particular, that they have to have an on-site uh, treatment plant in their yard, 
and their only ability is to, to withdraw or take out about 40 to 50 percent of the nitrogen and if the requirement is to get to 60 to 70 percent of the nitrogen you're talking about a homeowner incurring much more additional expense to operate a little treatment plant and they're not even going to be able to comply so we still will have to construct the sewer because only the sewer system and the connection to a treatment plant can withdraw up the, uh, the levels that we need to on nitrogen. That gets us to the 90 to 95% withdrawal of nitrogen from the system and gives us the great capacity in which to meet the uh, guidelines of the uh, state for what we are allowed to add in, in nitrogen into the environment. Thank you. Lastly, from me, before I open up to the rest of the board, in terms of if this gets proved at, approved at town meeting, Chris, and, and related to some of the unanswered questions, from the time that it gets approved at town meeting to when those pipes actually go in the ground, what is the, what's the realistic time frame for a homeowner to have to actually hook into this? I mean, realistically, Mr. Chairman, it's probably two to four years. Okay. So, so in terms of some of the unanswered questions, though we, we are working as hard as we can at getting those answers, there may be some questions that aren't answered, and the town is going to have to vote based on confidence. But as Chris just said, this isn't something that we've made up. This is something that we have to do. Don? Thank you, Mr. Chair. All of those are very compelling motivating uh, factors uh, for the town meeting, but they're doubly so for us. The, the committee that we have in place right now can only provide what we have found for them as answers. They're not supposed to be constructing this, this new committee. Some of these things should have answers and they should have had answers months ago from us. Like, for instance, if I already have a new septic system that I've installed, I borrowed money from the county, and this is not news, this is something we've discussed and I have an outstanding loan that still has a betterment on my deed for 20 more years or whatever. And am I gonna be allowed to keep that and uh, add on to it a new loan uh, for the hookup? That should have been an answer that we should have. I mean, that's something that the county was here talking to us about months and months ago. Some of these are pretty simple answers and I'm, I'm real frustrated. We keep having the same questions come up and some of them have answers. And we're asking for more money as we go along. I mean, I just feel like there's a compelling reason to do this, but there's also a compelling motivation for us to find out what we can find out and not wait on it. Thank you, Don. Larry? Well, I, I don't disagree with that. We, we have some policy decisions we have to make as a board. Uh, right now, running it, and it may have been later than it should have, but I think the first step is the Board of Health to get involved, and, and Megan is looking at some of those to bring us uh, recommendations back to the board. Uh, we're waiting for uh, uh, some more uh, details from CDM Smith on exactly what homes will be sewered. Uh, we've moved towards uh, and get those answers and those supposed to be done by the end of the year. So as Michael said, we have a lot to do in a few weeks. Uh, you know, CDM Smith is doing surveys for various reasons that, that got delayed uh, a little bit, but now it's coming together. And the uh, uh, the cost of not going forward is, dr is uh, dramatic. So we, we want to go in with, with all the details we can, but quite frankly, it won't be a perfect world. And we'll have to uh, make some adjustments in the time period we have. And, and, and to that extent, uh, the fact that it will take two to four to five years to actually put the system in place does provide us some leeway. I, I would, Michael, if I may, because uh, people, it uh, comes up as questions, I think, sometimes if, uh, talking about the, uh, what we're doing with the watershed, uh, 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 the watershed uh, permitting process we're working on, because it gets a little confusing. If if you have a factory and uh, are discharging a pollutant into the waterway, you get a permit to be able to uh, basically add that to the water, that pollutant to uh, discharge a this discharge would, permit. This would fall under Pleasant Bay Alliance. Okay. Warren article. So go okay. Ahead. Uh, and the, uh, you know, we're sued, as uh, Chris has said, that we have to remove nitrogen from our, uh, from our embayments. The question came up is, and, and what we have to answer is, how do uh, the regulators enforce that, uh, those regulations that we do, in fact, remove the nitrogen? And there, 
the options they've looked at is one is they could basically tell each of us that have a septic, which is all of us because that's what we have in Harvest, individually have a discharge permit, which would be unworkable, be very expensive to prove that we, and then as Chris says, we have to buy additional uh, removal that would make it impossible. So what we're doing in the Pleasant Bay Alliance, which, which is the first in the state, is looking at a, uh, uh, a watershed permit which allows the regulators, the DEP in this case, backed by EPA, uh, to give us a basically a discharge permit uh, for the waterway. And that means that we, our part of that discharge permit is to uh, uh, take responsibility for following our CWMP, which is to say we're going to remove the nitrogen within the amount of time that, we, uh, that we've said we're going to do. If we don't move forward, we jeopardize that commitment on our on our uh, watershed permitting process. And the downside, you know, Boston Harbor is always, that scares the crap out of it. Excuse me, bad term. <laughs> no pun <laughs> that, that, that scares us. <laughs> that scares us. But quite frankly, what scares me even more is if EPA were to come back and say, okay, you guys aren't moving forward. We're in pursuit. Individually, each of you have to get a discharge permit because that's completely unworkable and it costs us a fortune. So we need the we need these details. We need the answers, and and you know people are going, and we're going to get very close to it. But we need to move ahead. Oh, thank you, Larry. Um, Sharon, the question that Don asked, if you're going to answer that, stand at the mic. Has that question been? Is that part of the list of questions you're waiting for an answer for? Are you are you talking? Are you talking about the Board of Health? No, Don, Don, will you just repeat your question that we're yeah. still waiting for an answer for? Yeah, yeah, for the Board of Health is the next one. But uh, if I currently have a loan, let's say I just got it a, few, a couple of years ago with the county, mm -hmm. will they actually allow an additional loan on top of it, or does the first loan have to be paid off in order to enter into the site? All right. No, I don't know the answer to that. However, I have put a call in to the guy at the, and right now I couldn't tell you what his name is, I have it written down at home. I called him, um, the one from the county, and I know we had him in here before to the board. What we want to do is get him in for one of our meetings, uh, the Wastewater Support Committee, on a Tuesday morning and have him answer some of these questions. So what I would ask of you is the questions that you have send to me so that when I get in touch with him, I can let him know what some of the questions we're going to have that he can have some <laughs> answers for us. So if anybody in the board has any of these questions, let me know because I am waiting to hear back from him to set up a meeting to have him come in. We are also, uh, there's two people on the, on the committee that have um, been in contact with some of the banks to see kind of, you know, what's going to be available, whether they're interested. We don't have the information yet. There's two people working on that. When we get that, we're going to have a meeting on that as well. But I'd like to separate that from the one with the county, because I think there's going to be a lot of questions on Thank that you, one. Sharon. Chris, did you want you had to want to add something on that, or you? No, I, I just I was going to reiterate a little bit what Sharon was leading. That we do have the the county coming out to answer some of those questions, and then the banks. And I think it would be good in a public forum to have these questions answered, because I think honestly, you know, Don's questions are probably not just Don, Don's. He probably represent quite a bit of people yeah. in the community. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to find those, and we want to make sure that we have the answers done in a, in a public forum, so people can hear the answers. Mm -hmm. I'd say any board member that has questions should get those questions to Chris and and. Uh, Chris and Sharon, that'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah, and then because then I will see that he has those questions before he actually comes out. Now I'm going to have a question that I don't have an answer to that just came up that made me think of this. You know, we have been reaching out to the homeowners. All right. I'm going to cut you off. Okay. Only at this point talking about the articles, so I don't okay. want to get too far right. astray. All right. We'll okay, we'll that's good. I told right. you I'd put it on the agenda next week as well. All right. Don, go ahead. Yeah, just briefly. I mean, it goes beyond that. Uh, I want to clarify for Larry's purposes here. The Board of Health has no position on any of this stuff and was just jo asked to join in on this uh, conversation a week and a half ago. Megan is not the Board of uh, Health. She's the uh, health director. Okay. What else? I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Chris, go ahead. I don't want to prolong this too much, but just, you know, fairness is fair. And Megan has been recently engaged 
as we have discussions with the town of Chatham. Uh, you know, it's very fascinating to me that the town of Chatham has in there the one year standard and, and they have certain elements and they're considering after 10 years of uh, operation that they now have to consider making revisions to their one year standard to give people more time. And Megan, I think, has done an outstanding job to go find what are other towns doing. So if somebody has a brand new system, what are the options? So staff is trying to create those uh, elements for the Board of Health to have an intelligent discussion to eventually get to what works best for Harwich. But, you know, it was kind of fascinating that, you know, Chatham is kind of finding their way too, as we will find our way in this new venture to be as fair as we can be. But, but just to lay that out a little bit more. Thanks, Chris. Tom? Yeah. My concern is, and I'm familiar with what you're saying, my mm -hmm. concern is what M Megan was initially looking at was Chatham and Falmouth. They weren't involved with entering into a consent decree uh, on a lawsuit. They built their systems not under duress at all. So what it is uh, they were able to do with uh, hardship grants, how long, whether you can grant them or not, these are questions that we got to flip back to our lawyer and look at the agreement to see what it contemplates as allowing. Right. I, I couldn't agree with you more, but at the same token, I don't want the public to think that we're sitting on our hands. We've got paid consultants working on this. We have our town administrator that spent an incredible amount of time on this, past committee that spent time on this. There's a lot of people spending time on this. And if a board member has questions that aren't answered, the board member should send those to the administrator and the committee and make sure they get answered. Julie, go ahead. One yeah. other piece of that, though, I, you know, that we have to put out there and to the point, to your point and to John's point. Is that not loud enough? No. So <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that ultimately we have another piece here that we need to make sure is public in the sense that as we move forward and we have these issues, but we do need to move forward or we'll be facing worse, you know, problems and, and heavier fines, never mind the monies we've already spent on this that, and again, we're mandated to do this, is that we also need to look at how we'll handle any kind of hardship, whether it be somebody elderly or simply cannot pay for this system, then the public also needs to understand, though, that doesn't get them out of it, but we'll work to figure out, is it something similar to a, a, a Title V, and we'll mandate it at closing. There'll, there'll have to be parameters in place so that this whole, uh, you know, system doesn't get stalled by a few people on a street that, in, in all fairness, it's an expensive undertaking, so I'm, I'm not criticizing them, but I am saying we, as a board and as a town, need to figure out how we'll deal with that. So our, our installation moves along and we're not stymied by those real situations. But I think that something like that, where if, if we had to pony up the money initially, we make sure that there's a lien or something that it gets taken care of at closing or it's mandated yeah. at closing. So just to be clear that although we'll have obstacles, it doesn't stop us. We, we need to move forward. So uh, it's a difficult conversation. Thank you, Julie. All set? Yep. Thank you. Moving on. Budget discussion. I just put this on follow-up from the March 10th budget hearings. We uh, have had budget hearings all day Saturday, 8 to 3. Any uh, board members wish to discuss any part of the budget or have any comments at this time? Julie? No, it was a wonderful day. No. <laughs> good sandwich. Yeah, it's a good sandwich, yeah. Larry? Uh, no, I, I think I'm waiting now for a follow-up discussion with FinCom. Okay. And we'll go from there. Janelle? Yep, me too. Don? No, I was just happy to see that we had the discussion about perhaps some of these things should be put off onto a ballot and, and keeping the budget in order and let the public have uh, some say in it. Because uh, their wallet, it doesn't matter where it's coming from, uh, it, the, their wallet is paying it all. So it, it was a very substantive discussion. Yeah. Um, uh, Sam, I'm going to wait till we have our conversation with FinCom. Um, but thank you to all the department heads that took the time on Saturday to show up and, and present. Town Administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I do have a few things this evening. Just uh, we did receive a <coughs> notice, a public notice of vegetation management plan from uh, MDAR, so the uh, folks will be in town to start to do vegetation management. So that material is included in there. I think it's the same management plan throughout the, uh, throughout the Cape, uh, but that has been an issue that we have alerted people in the past. 
on the, um, we do have the uh, meeting of the Cape Cod Municipal Health Group for managers, superintendents, and members of the, of the boards of selectmen uh, just to get an update on the various uh, health insurance issues. <coughs> Unfortunately, that is Friday morning after a Thursday night meeting. So the timing isn't great, but it's at uh, the Cape Tech facility uh, and that starts at 8.30 for a continental breakfast and then 8.45 to 10.45 uh, Friday, March 23rd. So if any members of the board do want to attend that, uh, we probably should do a posting just to make sure that we have that covered. And then under the similar light the, uh, the night before uh, in the Dennis Council on Aging at six o'clock uh, Thursday, March 22nd is the DHY Clean Water Community Meeting to get an update on the status of that project and, and how that is moving forward. And that is open to the public. Yeah, these are, these are uh, I think generally o both of these are open to the public. On the, uh, I did want to report too, and I, I didn't have it on there, but um, Bob, Bob Lawton, uh, my acting assistant, has put together a ad. I know he met with the two members of the board that he had indicated, uh, and I think he, he told me anyway, he's got a green light that he's good to go, so we will, uh, start uh, to advertise that. I actually thought the green light was to bring it up back to the full board for a discussion. The CVPP. Uh, pardon? The CVPB to bring it back to. Uh, yeah, because I thought that he had indicated to me that the job description itself was going to be left intact, and we were going to emphasize in the job description. I'm sorry, in the job posting, uh, what the elements were that that you gentlemen wanted to have emphasized. I, I've, I still would like to have that come back as an agenda item uh, for a discussion. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. And that concludes my uh, report this so evening. So we'll put that in for next week, right, Chris? Yeah. Thank you. Selectman's report. Don. No, I have a lovely Saturday. <laughs> Janelle. Yeah, thanks. Good lunch to the farm chef. I can't remember her name. I'm sorry. Linda. Linda. Yeah. She did do a good job. Yeah. Julie. Yes, thanks to Linda, and thank you to the um, Cranberry Festival Committee, and I attended RUNA on Saturday mm -hmm. night. It was excellent, and um, I look forward to more uh, presentations there. Thank you. Uh, my, my dilemma on RUNA is, is that they kept encouraging us to sing, and if <laughs> I start to sing, I immediately get kicked out of any place I'm in, <laughs> and so I have to be careful. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would, I'd like to ask if, uh, through you to the town administrator, to Chris. Chris, I mentioned at Saturday's meeting if we could uh, uh, outline uh, where sort of a matrix of how our uh, uh, budgets are, uh, are going. For instance, we have CDM Smith. Yes, the money we yes, pay to them yes. goes separate. And I suggested this type of general, just real simple uh, matrix, because we have the same thing with uh, DPW, for instance. I think it'd be good to know what, for instance, what uh, CGM Smith's overall budget is, and then how it's split between various departments. And, and I just, you know, scratched out some things for, I think anywhere where we have, uh, you know, items that, uh, that are split between different uh, line item budgets, they'll all go back to one department. It'd be, it'd be good to us if we knew where it was, uh, where the money was being spent. Okay, and I, I don't think it's a little bit different than what I, I thought what you would ask me on uh, Saturday was CDM Smith. We have two contracts that we're engaged with them and, and what are each of the contracts for? And because this is talking about sales, finance, production. No, let's cross that off. That's just, just the only, only my hand, only my pencil is, is relevant to that discussion. Any questions you have? You can yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll talk together. offline. We were going to get together anyway. Yeah. That makes sense though. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Yeah, we, since, since I've passed. Uh, Runa was in the past. I just want to be able to uh, put out there that there were uh, going to be a series of concerts at the South Harwich Meeting House uh, yeah. uh, uh, this weekend. Uh, three of them, if you happen to call or go online to make a reservation. I heartily uh, urge everybody to support that because, I mean, these people spent years of their own time and sweat and love to yeah. put this place yeah. together. Well, thank you for saying that. I, I, I think it's the Chatham that. Choral Society is what you go on their yeah. site, yeah. 2 o'clock and 5 o'clock on Saturday. And Irish Harp and Bagpipes. All Great set? Yep. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Mm -hmm. We are adjourned.